Hi, thanks for chatting with us, Simu. I'm Amy from BC, Britain's East and Southeast Asian Network, and this is my colleague. Hi, thanks for being with us, Simu. I'm Isabel. So, hey guys, I'm so excited to talk to you two. So grateful. Uh, so after watching the film, I have to say, I thought I had drama in my family, but that's nothing compared to what Shang-Chi has got going on with his family. And I feel that the sense of belonging is a huge theme in the movie and watching Shang-Chi reconnect with his heritage is a journey I think so many diaspora East and Southeast Asians have been going through, especially in the past year or so. I know you've been vocal about the rise in anti-East and Southeast Asian racism during the pandemic, and it's been so good to see someone with your platform speaking out about it, by the way, so thank you. Um, I want to ask, how do you feel about the timing of this movie in light of what's been happening? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's, a, a, I think when you read about all of these instances, all of these attacks, which are tragic, which are awful, and there's a real tendency to internalize that, even if you yourself are not somebody that was directly attacked. I think there's a sense that you internalize it and, and it manifests as this sort of apologetic shame, this energy of feeling like your Asian-ness is something that you, you don't want in your life and that, that brands you and marks you. And, and it's, you know, it's not so different than what we've been experiencing for generations, right? With, you know, the Chinese Exclusion Act, with, um, you know, the uh, internment of Japanese Americans in the Second World War. I don't know how familiar you are with those things, but obviously they're more American centric, but they're, they're a part of our history and, and they're, a, you know, they're indicative of this thing called the perpetual foreigner syndrome, which is that no matter how long we have been in a country, some of, some, you know, Chinese, you know, East Asian immigrants uh, have, have been in, in San Francisco and parts of the U.S. for upwards of 150 years, but, but that, you know, we're still seen as foreigners just because of our face, because of the way that the media portrays us, and, um, and, and that that is seen, also seen as, as lesser than. And, and so I think so many diasporic Asians know that feeling of growing up uh, and feeling lesser than. And, and so I think the timing of this movie is, is A, good, and B, critical, because it is, it is meeting that kind of hate and that internalized shame and, and, and negativity with an equal and opposing and, and a hopefully greater force of joy and of celebration. Um, you know, you've both seen the movie, so you'll know, I mean, that this movie is every bit a celebration of our culture, of our language, of our faces. And, um, you know, I, I have the immense pleasure of playing opposite so many talented Asian heroes and heroines that uh, each have their own, you know, nuances and dimensionalities. And, and it's just, you know, it, it's so incredibly rare that we get that, you know, that many opportunities to showcase these characters and and um you know I, I really can't wait for the world to see it i think it is the right time yeah for me it's been really powerful to see you being so vocal for our communities uh, even from the uk and to see that you've maintained this uh, throughout your progression from shows like king's Kim's Convenience to this majority Asian uh, cast Marvel film, as you say. Um, you've worked on a few things that focus on the East and Southeast Asian diaspora stories. Were there any subtle references to East and Southeast Asian um, cultures that you were glad to see included in the film? Uh, references that would resonate deeply in, with our communities, like having uh, two names, for example. So many, so many. I mean, starting from, you know, when we meet Sean, uh, Sean and Katie in San Francisco, there's a little close up uh, when he takes off his shoes before he enters Katie's apartment. I think that was very, very important for us to show. It's, it's such a subtle thing, but it is also so universal among our families that we, we, you know, we, we definitely take our shoes off the, the home, whether it's a house or an apartment, they're definitely shoe free zones. And in order to keep the, um, the, the floors clean, of course, we, we not only take off the shoes, but oftentimes we have slippers that we, that we then put on. And uh, the only thing that I think was missing from our movie is a, is a va like a, a vacuum sealed remote control or a remote control that's been saran wrapped. I would have, I would have loved to see that. Um, there's also, I mean, even in the way that, you know, we see two Asian American characters trying to figure out the pronunciation of Shang-Chi on the airplane, I think is so incredible because it really, it introduces 
to the world this notion that even though we we are Asian or we have the faces, we all have varying degrees of fluency with, you know, other languages, um, and we all have varying degrees of connection to you know I guess our our ancestral homeland, and and so just you know moments like that are are really interesting and. You know, even the moment not much later when uh, Ronnie Chang's character says, oh, that's OK, I speak ABC. And so it in also introduces this notion of American born Chinese and, and just, you know, the idea that somebody, you know, who, who is ethnically Chinese but raised in America can be very, very different than somebody who is raised in China. I mean, you know, it, it sounds obviously very obvious to you and I, but uh, for the rest of the world, maybe maybe not so much so. Yeah, I do find it really exciting that Shang-Chi will enter as it's in its own right as a discourse in that sort of identity of being born in a different country for where people might expect you to. And speaking of that, I've heard it quoted that significant East and Southeast Asian representation in Western cinema tends to move in cycles. So there was Bruce Lee in the 70s, and he was able to position himself as a hero, which was unusual for East Asian men in North America at that time. And then there was in the 90s, Joy Luck Club, and I believe that was the first all Asian American cast in mainstream media, sort of North American films. And then now, nearly three decades later, we see Crazy Rich Asians closely followed by Raya and now Shang-Chi. So what do you think needs to happen to continue this momentum so that East and Southeast Asian people on screen are seen as just part of the norm and not an anomaly? I think it's happening now and it's very different than what was happening before, which is that in the case of Bruce, in the case of Joy Luck Club, you had a lot of those decision makers that were not Asian. And, and so even, even though those stories, you know, are rightfully deserved to be celebrated and the representation rightfully deserves to be celebrated, um, you know, when, when the decision makers are not Asian and, and it's not in their best interest to continue to tell those stories, I think that's when you get um, instances where in the, in the case of Bruce Lee, he had a show that he helped develop and was in line to star in and then was ultimately replaced by a white lead who then played an Asian character. And, and the show, of course, was, was Kung Fu. And Full Circle Moment is, is also, in a way, what, the, what Shang-Chi, the comic book character, was, was initially based off of. So, you know, some, some problematic origins there that we're very happy that we modernized for, for this movie. But, um, you know, in the case of Joy Luck Club as well, um, you know, directed by Wayne Wong, but, uh, but you, know, you know, released by, by studio executives that were not Asian and, and in an environment where, you know, that, that, that critical mass had not yet been achieved, it was very hard to keep that momentum going. What I really, really love about what's happening now is that we have more Asian and Asian American uh, and diasporic Asian storytellers. And we are able to be the masters of our own narrative. And, and so it, it's, it's at then that we are able to kind of get deep into the discourse of, of our lived experiences and really have those intimate conversations. And, and that's what really makes the storytelling so rich. I mean, you mentioned uh, Crazy Rich, Raya, and Shang-Chi, which are, of course, studio movies. But then you have, you know, movies like The Farewell um, that, that are, you know, you know, indies, but, but are incredible. You have movies like Minari, you have, um, you know, you have even on Netflix, things like To All the Boys I've Loved Before, the half of it. I mean, there's, there is a, a wealth of, of stories now. I'm not going to say that it's where we need to be, but it, there, there's significantly more than there ever has been. And it does seem to be happening more and more. And, and so I think, for us, you know, creatives, I think it's on us to continue to push to tell our stories and to push to be in decision making positions where we can green light and we can um, story tell from behind the camera. And then for for consumers, it's it's critical that we continue to support the projects that accurately represent us and portray us the way that we want to be portrayed. Yeah, that's great. I really agree. And um, yeah, I have a daughter, so it's exciting that she can have a choice of movies and films that she can watch. But very quickly, last question for you. Are you team rice or team noodle, Simu? I'm sorry, team rice or team noodle? Yeah. Uh, oh, man, man, man. That's, that's a really hard question. I love, I love noodles and all forms of noodles, but I will say this. A meal is very, very hard for me if I don't have a bowl of rice. Um, Yay. Uh, <laughs> I'm team rice. That's what I was raised on, you know, and, and there's something about that fluffy bowl of white rice, of white steamed rice that just makes me feel at home. And, um, ah, damn it. That means I'm team rice. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Thank you so much, Simu. Thank you so much. I appreciate the conversation, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.